Have you been looking for a reliable Wi-Fi network scanner for Mac OS? Well, Wi-Fi Explorer Pro 3 is the only network scanner you'll need. Anytime I need to see what's around me, that's the first app I'm going to open. It's my most widely used application on my Mac. Whether I'm doing an assessment in an office, in higher education, or even a warehouse, I'm opening Wi-Fi Explorer Pro first to get an idea of what I might have to deal with. And by the way, if you're interested in purchasing Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, I have an affiliate link down below in the description if you want to help support the channel. Now, the five reasons why you need Wi-Fi Explorer Pro are one for columns, profiles, inspectors, external or remote sensors and network comparison. So why don't we look at each one? All right. The first thing we're going to look at is columns in Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. So here you see I have all the list of networks that are surrounded by me here where I'm recording. And you can see there's a lot of columns that are available. If you wanted to add additional columns, it's as easy as right clicking on one of these columns and enabling uh, one of the options here, such as basic rates. Now, the, the cool thing about adding columns is you can go down here, down below, for example, and maybe let's select one of the Wi-Fi networks. So I want to select this one, Slurpfish, and let's say I want to look at this neighbor report, and I always want to have a column for this uh, to see if neighbor report is enabled. Click and drag this to the top where you want that to show, and you've now created a column for that. And you can see that link, uh, I dragged the wrong one, a link measurement. I want neighbor report. So there you go. Now you see that it's enabled. These other ones, other networks don't uh, advertise that. You can remove a column just by right clicking on one and then going down to where that name is and selecting link measurement and it's, it has disappeared. The, the really cool new feature of Wi-Fi Explorer is being able to pin a column because if you've got a lot of columns that, that are enabled here, so if I go in and enable a lot of these columns, we have to scroll over to the right to see them all. And what happens is I, don't, I no longer see what DSS ID or SSID I'm looking at. So the cool benefit here is you can right click on any of these columns to pin that column so it does not move. So I can click pin and you can see there is kind of a black line right there. We can extend that out if we want to. But if I now scroll to the right, I can see which one of these columns and, and the data points here is associated to which DSS ID because I've highlighted it. So that's a really cool feature and you can pin more than one column if you need to. So if I pin the second column, I now have both BSS ID and network name pinned there, and I can see all the other data that I want to see. So if you want to reorganize all these columns as you want, you can click and drag to their location, and that should be able to reorganize it the way that you see fit and comfortable for how you're doing an analysis of Wi-Fi networks around you. Now, if you want to see more details, more columns that maybe you, you don't see visible here, or maybe there's something you want to add manually, you can do so. You go over to preferences for Wi-Fi Explorer. And in this profile that I'm currently using, I can click on this plus icon right here. If you could see that this plus icon right here, and then do a search for any of the information elements that have been added to this list. So if I wanted to look for uh, example, mesh, uh, what is the mesh um, information element I want to add? Maybe the mesh ID, I can select that and click add, and that adds it to the, the last um, column there. I can move it so that maybe it goes right above max rate. Then if I scroll to the right, you can see now there is a mesh ID column that I have manually added through the search of the profile that I'm currently using. Now, speaking of profiles, profiles is a really nice feature that has been recently added to Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. And this is useful for different environments that you may be walking into and you have different columns uh, set up for that environment. It's very similar uh, to the Wireshark profiles. All you have to do is go to preferences or actually not even preferences, right here at the top, if you click on that, you could actually select manage profiles. And by clicking on manage profiles, you can see I have one default profile at the moment. If I was 
uh, always going into a specific environment, or maybe there's a specific scenario that I know I want all these uh, specific columns to show, you can click on this plus icon down here and then give it a name and select which columns you want enabled. So maybe you do not care for uh, vendor because you already know what vendor is gonna be in that environment. Maybe you want a device name, you might not need annotations, you want SNR, uh, channel, and then maybe I do have uh, mesh that I want to add here, mesh ID, uh, anything else that you need or may not need, you can save it as that profile. And if you double click here, usually if you double click, you can change the name. So I'll call this um, Wells Network. And so now if I exit out of here, right back here at this drop down, I can change the profile and the columns will change for me. So you can see now I have a much uh, shorter list of columns. So the profiles is really uh, great to customize for whatever network environment you may be walking into. I do know that from one of our podcast episodes over at Clear to Send, Adrian did mention that he had to create all these different, um, all, all these different information elements, fields, that you can see here, I think there's over 500. You could search for the ones you want and be able to select it from there and, and add. But now the next addition, next cool feature of Wi-Fi Explorer Pro is having the ability to use a separate sensor or a listener. So right over here at the top, I'm currently in active mode. It's using my built-in Wi-Fi adapter in order to do the scan. Now, there are some benefits to using the active mode and some uh, challenges to not using, to using your Wi-Fi adapter because if you want to go into passive mode, you have to disconnect from your, your Wi-Fi network, but then you are unable to use your Wi-Fi adapter when it is in passive mode. So to get around that, I have this WLAN Pi right here, which I have plugged into, I have another one, I have it already plugged into my laptop. And the WLAN Pi is something I got from WLPC in Prague. I purchased two of them to be able to test with. And it already came, uh, it was kind of a, a special WLAN Pi that came with a case. And it has a nice USB cable that just kind of locks into the 3D printed case. And the WLAN Pi offers, uh, will, will offer itself to be an external adapter that you could use. So if you head over to the top left of Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, you can click where it says active and actually select the WLAN Pi as your external adapter. And that way you could do your passive scans from that adapter itself. And by doing this, uh, it can record... Um, all the different details without having to lose your, your Wi-Fi adapter capabilities. And what I can show you here is moving on to the next feature because when you use your WLAN Pi, uh, you could either have it connected directly to your laptop or you can use it as a remote sensor. Meaning if you've got this WLAN Pi connected in a different office or in a different environment, as long as you can get to the IP address of that WLAN Pi, you can add it as a remote sensor. So in this drop down here where I see WLAN Pi, I can click on manage remote sensors and then you can add, press the plus button and add the IP address of that remote sensor. And you would be able to see it as the same way I do here as my external adapter. So currently it is doing a passive scan. So you can see that it is fairly quick to, to do the scan. Now, the next feature with this is being able to then click on this right column here. This, there's a little button to bring up this right column. And you can see all these different uh, inspector elements. So you could see what clients may be on that SSID. And you need to be able to scan passively in order to get these clients. Uh, the author of this application, Adrian Granados, has been able to uh, look at the at the packet capture itself and see what clients are associated with which SSID. So if you were to select one of these, you, as long as it's passively scanning on on that channel and seeing the connection to the SSID, we could determine what clients are there. 
And so as I try to find, here's, here's one network where I can see three clients. I'm able to uh, tell what the MAC address is, the vendor, and also its signal strength. Now, the other cool features of these inspectors is if you click on this first one right here, it will give you uh, some recommendations uh, some determined based upon some common issues, whether that is a low signal strength. It's, it's giving me that indicator because it is at a negative 80 dBm currently. But if I were to maybe select one on channel 36, so currently not a lot of issues, but this one shows that it's a 2.4 gigahertz only, meaning it was not able to determine that that uh, network is on a five gigahertz uh, channel. Clicking on this clock icon, we can see a history of, of what has been seen about this specific network, the timestamp along with the signal and SS, SNR. You could export these details down below by clicking on export. And you, what, what's nice is you get a little table that shows the average max and the min. I think that's really great in terms of looking at uh, signal strength and also SNR on an average. I think it would be great too to see uh, if it could be able to tell us retry rates uh, in passive mode. Moving on to the next inspector, Right here, we kind of see the uh, performance, uh, a little glimpse of performance of the specific wireless network that I have selected right here. If I move over to my network, you can see the different channels, channel 36, 5% uh, for beacon overhead, how many other networks are on that channel, and how many overlapping networks are also there. And so we already went through clients, here is a, a proximity uh, a BLE uh, beacon that is, is heard somewhere. Uh, I haven't used this feature too much, but uh, you can use Wi-Fi Explorer to take a look at this. And then also be able to use Zigbee, which I, do, I don't have a USB Zigbee adapter, but maybe I should take a look at that for a future video. So that's client inspectors. Again, this is used with passive scanning. So if you're gonna use this feature with your built-in Wi-Fi adapter, just be aware that you will be unable to browse the internet or be able to use your, your wireless adapter in uh, passive mode on Wi-Fi Explorer. Uh, so it's best to use a remote sensor for that capability. Now, the next feature that I want to share here with you is comparing network uh, uh, features or information elements. This is a, a really great ad if you're trying to troubleshoot and see what the difference is between a network. You can do that just by selecting two of these. So if I select uh, frame thrower and then uh, compare that to Slurpfish, you can see on the bottom how the tables have changed. So I'll, I'll show you again. I'll select Slurpfish and then Framethrower. And you can see the compare networks has been made visible. What this will show you are two, uh, two panes. On the left pane, you're able to see which information elements are the same, which ones are different, which ones don't exist for that, for that SSID. So you can see that there's nothing different uh, between these two. Uh, you can see that there is a power constraint information element on Slurpfish, but there is not one present for Frame Thrower. You could see that, uh, I don't see one where there's both a different one, but you could see like TPC report is shown in one, but it's not in the other. Uh, really nice to see uh, what, why maybe a client is unable to connect to a specific SSID or BSSID, and maybe you want to compare the two and figure out maybe there if there is an in incompatibility with that BSSID. So here I'm comparing two two uh, of the same SSIDs, but two different BSSIDs, and you could see how uh, the channels are are different. What I'd like to see done uh, updated here is possibly getting uh, very co high contrasting different contrasting colors I think the the blue colors are a little too close so it might be difficult to see the differences of which one is which so those are the features of 
of Wi-Fi Explorer Pro that I like to use, the five reasons why you should use it. And again, that is columns, your profiles, your uh, inspectors, especially the client inspectors, being able to use sensors, your external and, and remote sensors, and then also being able to compare networks. So take a look at those features. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below in the video. And if you like videos like this one, be sure to give me a, a thumbs up on the video and hit subscribe. And if again, check out Wi-Fi Explorer. I have a link down at the bottom in the description of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching.